Pokemon Platinum, where you get stalked by two girls throughout the entire game, and by the end, you still haven't gotten to first base with either of them. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Slowflake, and I will be your guide to the wondrous region of Sinnoh. And as you're probably noticing, I decided to record both screens because during battles there may be some interesting stuff going on in the bottom screen, such as, for example, uh, the PP of my moves, which I want to keep track of, and it will be a lot easier for you to keep track of it if I record it as well. So, yeah, now we get a few shots of some areas in the game. This is Eterna Forest, for example. This is Eterna City, with shots of Looker and Charon, which are both completely exclusive to, Di to Platinum, sorry. They aren't found in Diamond and Pearl at all. They even threw in a Looker cameo in Black and White, by the way. And now we get shots of... Probably my favorite starter trio in the entire series. I could uh, I could go on and on about how I don't really like Generation 5 final forms at least. And ooh, this guy is totally going to be a good guy. I'm calling it right now. Now, of course, it's Cyrus. He's the main villain. And we got a creepy shot of Giratina. Yes, it's Giratina. And we got a peek in the distortion world to end this little introduction. This is a silhouette of Giratina's origin form, which was introduced in Platinum as well. So, okay, now we are going to go through the same thing we go through every time we start a new Pokemon game. We are greeted by Professor Rowan here. Too bad he's not related at all to Rowan Atkinson. That would make him a lot cooler. Everyone would be cooler if they were Rowan Atkinson, by the way. But, yeah, no, this is my first adventure. I'm, I'm not going to scroll through all the text given in Control Info and Adventure Info, because that's the kind of thing you find in the instruction booklet. And I don't want to be here all night with this guy, okay? Here I have a Pokeball, and now we're going to be asked to click on the middle. Yeah, I... I <laughs> Normally you do this with the, the, with the stylus, but I'm going to use a mouse for this, naturally. And... Okay, blah, 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 yeah, I know, I know, we play together, we work together, we fight together, we do everything together! Okay, so that may have sounded a little wrong. I apologize. Okay, now he's going to introduce his job. Yes, of course, you're the Pokémon Professor, after all, which is a title that... Doesn't it belong to Professor Oak, actually? Oh, are you a boy or are you a girl? Reminds me of those... Facebook statuses that I posted uh, during my hiatus. Especially the one where Oak asks Bulbasaur, Are you a boy or are you a girl? Okay, so my name is Jeff, but now this time I'm going to type it in lowercase. Because everything in this game, uh, except for Pokemon names, is in lowercase. So I just want to uh, conform with everything else in the game. Yeah, I have CDO. It's like OCD, except the letters are in alphabetical order, as they should be. And now, this guy is, of course, named Barry. Anyone who's named, who's seen the anime knows that, though his counterpart in the manga is Pearl, but that's besides the point. This guy is called Barry in the games as well, especially since it was the first default name, but whatever. Now, it's about time that we dived right into Generation 4. And by the way, uh, the, the beginning of the game in Platinum is radically different from the, the, the one in Diamond and Pearl. I'm going to try and mention it whenever I can, though I might be forced to skip some stuff because the differences are, to be, to be honest, massive. For example, here, this is a report about Professor Rowan, who has returned to Sinnoh from the Kanto region, Whereas, in Diamond and Pearl, it was a news report about a shiny Gyarados being sighted, possibly uh, in Lake Verity, though, no, I don't think the game ever says that it was actually on Lake Verity, but whatever. So, see you next week, same Poke Time, same Poke Channel! Yeah, I just had to do this. So now I'm just going to switch the text speed, thank you very much, I don't want to... I have to scroll 
through text even longer than I have to, and... Whoa! Well, talk about coming in unannounced. Well, okay, so this is going to be our rival for this game. It's Barry, as we named him a little bit earlier on. And by the way, I don't want to hear any jokes about ADD, alright? There's someone really close to me who has ADD, although without hyperactivity, so it's not really the same thing. But I don't want to see any jokes about that. This is a really touchy subject, okay? And oh, hey, is this a new PC? Oh, sweet irony, because I'm recording this from a brand new PC as well. So, okay, we're going to go see Professor Rowan and get some Pokemon. I'll be waiting outside, yeah, because he... Just look at that! He runs really freaking fast. And look the speed of crawl at which I'm stuck. And now this is, okay, my PC. P uh, my PC doesn't really do a whole lot since there is infinite storage in your bag from Generation 4 onwards. I call this the Palkia brand bag because seriously, with all the stuff you can put in this bag, you really have to bend the laws of space in order to do that. The X button opens the menu, thank you very much. This is something that I'm going to need to get acquainted to, because in the first three generations it was the start button, which I mapped to enter, but now the X button, I mapped it to X. So I, it, it's going to take some time getting used to, but I'm confident it's not going to be that much of an issue. And, okay, now there are a few TV shows that can air, such as the Contest Digest, for example, but they really aren't that interesting, so I'm not going to really watch TV very much, if at all, in this LP. It's somewhat less useful than in Generation 3, even. You know how impatient Barry is? Took off before he could even ask what it was about. Well, he wants to go rob an old man of his Pokémon! And wow, they really put a lot of detail into describing in depth what everything in the kitchen does. Whereas the TV isn't all that interesting, as I said. So why isn't my mom in the kitchen? Like she should be! Okay, okay. Mandatory kitchen joke done. Moving on to something else, because I apologize. This isn't how I treat women at all. Women aren't exactly sandwich-making machines. They're human beings just like you and me. Just so that we're clear on that. And yeah, don't go into the tall grass. This is going to become fairly important a bit later on. So we're going to head outside. And the great outdoors caused me a lot of pain. Oh, no, 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 no. That won't do. That won't do at all. Technology blows me away. Technology is I-N-C-R-E-D-I-B-L-E. -E. What's that spell? Incredible! Don't say anything else. You're ruined the tradition here. The Pokémon Professor returned to the next town over. Yeah, because this is a major plot twist here. The Professor doesn't actually live in your town. Well, this was Generation 4's definition of a plot twist before the black and white days where there are actually real plot twists that completely shatter the established form formula of Pokémon. So, at Twin Leaf Town, fresh and free. And yeah, as I was saying, uh, the outdoors caused me a great deal of pain when trying to record them because it would lag tremendously on my old computer. This is why I got my new computer earlier than anticipated because I planned on getting it closer to Diablo 3's release, which has no release date, by the way, just yet. We're still gonna have to wait a few more years, I'm afraid. But anyway, now that I have a new computer... DUD! Well, this isn't exactly the gym door that tossed me off of a ledge in Viridian City back in red, but still damn pretty close. I just pass in front of a door and BANG! Here goes Barry! And of course, yeah. Oh geez, forgot something. Well, at least you have a much better walking speed than me. Look at this! This is just so slow. It was a common complaint about that game. Of course, they tried to compensate for it somewhat by allowing you to use running shoes inside buildings, but still, the walking speed is just... Well, you're too slow! You're too slow! You're too slow! Okay, no, no, I'm not going to make my own rendition of that horrid Sonic rap. <laughs> Though, I'm sure some of you people will ask me to do it now that I suggested it. And, okay, now... Okay, once again, it's a $10 million fine if you're late. I don't have that kind of money. I start with, what, $3,000? So that's really a lot. 
4K Adventure. Oh, we've seen that before the X button opens the menu. Record your progress with save. No, you don't say there's nothing else on here. Well, that shows you the kind of caliber that Barry is as a trainer, especially since, as we've emphasized, neither of us has a single Pokemon, which is going to become rather important in, uh, yeah, right there. So now we are on Route 201, and if you remember, we want to go to Professor Rowan's lab in Sanjum Town, but there is just a small problem. There is tall grass in the way. Now, our brilliant and cunning Barry here is going to hatch a devious plan to get through the tall grass without using a repel or encountering wild Pokémon. Though, I wonder if you don't have any Pokémon if using a repel is okay. Especially since the repel uses your lead Pokémon to determine its effectiveness. So, whatever. And anyway, this isn't the way it works, because if I, we could just do that dash over to the next square, I'm sorry, but we would never have any problems with wild Pokémon. This genius here never thought of that. And naturally, there has to be someone here to sit, go and save him from the savage Bidoofs and Starlies found on Route 201. And I wonder how Professor Rowan saw from so far away that neither of us had Pokémon. Does it really show that much? Is it written on our bags or something? And okay, so now he's going to wonder whether they should get scolded for what they were about to do, but no, please, come on, let the Starlies and Bidoofs do the job for them. Imagine the newspapers, two kids get mauled by a Bidoof. This would be the most awesome headline ever. And, okay, me too, I love Pokemon too, and I will ask you once again, this reminds me of that scene in Paper Mario 2 where, uh, uh the... Her name was Francesca, I think, was uh, asking Frankie to tell her I love you a hundred times because, well, th that's basically what he's saying. We'll both answer a, a hundred times. We like Pokemon. And, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And, yes, naturally, he's a bit worried of what we'd want to do with Pokemon since we were we were just trying to bond with those Starlings and Bidoofs. Yeah, that's not going to work as an excuse now, will it? Oh, and now Barry is actually pretty much turning down a Pokemon because he knows that the professor will like that kind of attitude. So he sucks at Pokemon, but for human psychology, he may be okay. So, yeah, apologize for putting you through that exercise, but you don't have any Pokemon either, do you? Yeah, I know, because I remember that part of the game. Just promise me that you'll never recklessly endanger yourself again. Well, it's gonna be a lot easier with Pokémon of our own now, will it? And, okay, now it's time to introduce you to Professor Rowan's assistant, Don, who's bringing back the briefcase that Professor Rowan forgot at the lake. And Professor Rowan forgot the briefcase at the lake in Diamond and Pearl 2, though the events were vastly different. I'm going to recap how it goes in Diamond and Pearl after this whole opening segment thing. And yes, now Rowan is definitely convinced that giving us those rare Pokémon is the right thing to do. Because, yeah, there's a world that should be explored together because you can't even get out of your freaking town without getting assaulted by Starlies and Bidoofs. So, yeah, it's really hard to explore the next town over, let alone the world, without any Pokémon. And obviously Barry is psyched, whereas I, being a mute hero, can't show any form of emotion. <laughs> have to show some class here. You just want to get the star that has the advantage over me. Which is admittedly going to be a pain in the ass to deal with, since this run is going to be a Turtwig solo run all the way until Veilstone. So, yeah, this is going to be fun. So next time I'm actually going to get my Turtwig and do battle with Barry.